In Buddhism, death is no different from life. Every day one prepares oneself for that supreme moment, on the principle that a day without thinking of death is a day not fully lived. Also His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Tibet's spiritual and political leader, prepares in daily meditation to cross the boundary between life and death. Like an army general in the theater of war, he aims to explore every possible path and obstacle beforehand. A few months ago, Kandro Lamo passed away, a prominent doctor in Tibetan medicine. She was married to Dilgok Yenzi Rinpoche, a Buddhist teacher and head of the Nyingma school, the old school of Tibetan Buddhism. He was one of the teachers of the Dalai Lama and inspired thousands of people around the world to practice Buddhism. Father, but for me, he's uh, more of my teacher than a grandfather. Uh, so, same thing with Kandro. And in our practice, we see that the Lama, that wants the teacher in his concert as uh, inseparable, you know, same. So, Kandro is more like my guru also. So, that is my more relation with Kandro. <laughs> I dream about a few days ago, and then she was just next me as usual. We are staying together. I said, "Oh, mommy, I thought you died." And then she told me, "Of course I died." No. And then of course we lost always miss her. During many years, my past crossed with Kandro Lamo and daughter Shime Wangmo. Inspired by their altruism, I considered it a blessing that I filmed her while she was still alive. As the daughter of Rinpoche, Shimi Wangmo grew up in the vicinity of the great Tibetan masters. To accompany her mother mentally in the bardo of death, she circumambulates the stupa while turning the prayer wheels. Near the big stupa in Chesson Monastery, Kandro Lamo will be cremated this week. Since her death, many rituals were performed here for her during several months. Her body was placed in a box with salt in order to preserve it. The Yangtze, or newborn, is the reincarnation of Dilgo Kienzi Rinpoche. He was identified as such when he was five years old. Now he is one of the leaders performing the cremation for Kandro Lamo who in his previous incarnation had been his wife. Since I was uh, uh, five years old, I think, I stayed with uh, Kenzo Rinpoche and Kandro. And then um, Kenzo Rinpoche is always like kind and uh, uh, sometimes he's too kind, he's spoiling me. So Kandro is a uh, little bit strict with me and uh, so both of them are like my parents. And I think I spent um, uh, with Kenzo Rinpoche more than 20 years. Uh, 
uh, with Kandro until she passed away, so it's almost 30 years. There is a normal cremation with ordinary people. And then um, special cremation is performed for the, the lamas or, or a person who are not ordinary, extraordinary, in the sense that we're talking about high realization beings. So there are two different ways of doing So normal, ordinary people, we have to perform uh, 49 day ceremonies and this and that because uh, according to the text that they will be in intermediate state, parto, for certain days and then you have to perform these ceremonies. But in special case like uh, late Kandro, we because uh, uh, many people who was, uh, ask Kandro to pray when they die. So for those beings, and we sort of do the, the 49 day. So when the Lama, High Lama has passed away, we don't do for the Lama, but we do for the people who are connected to the Lama. Well, uh, I think she prepared for before one year. She knew she was going to die. But uh, we didn't believe because uh, we didn't want her to die. <laughs> and then she wrote everything what to do when she dies. And then she locked up because she didn't want us to see him. So then uh, she didn't want to go to a hospital actually. Then she just wanted to die in the monastery. All those are we all fear of dying. The, well, what we, we do all this practice because we are preparing for death. So if someone is with no fear of death, that is a, a great uh, ex experience for me. And then um, just before she died, the doctor said there's not much chance that she will live now. And, uh, and doctors are going around saying that, oh, you'll be okay. You know, they thought it's like normal people that she's afraid of dying, death. And then I called the doctor and I said, you know, she's not afraid of death, so you don't have to worry about that. Just before she passed away, uh, so doctor said maybe it's not much chance because her heart is failing and all that. So I went to her and now this is a moment I think I have to just to remind her, you know, the practice and think of you know cancer and and all that. And then that moment she laughed. She said, ah, it's really laugh. It's not sort of fake laugh, you know, because I've been with her for many years. So it's really like she thought it was really funny. <laughs> she laughed and then that was uh, that's it. That was the last word. And then immediately Trishirumbi said you should take back to the monastery. And uh, her body is still more, warmer than me, actually. Mm -hmm. Then all the, of course, uh, lamas and monks are touching, I did not touch. Then at 48 hours, she remained warm and flexible, and her face never changed. And after 48 hours, then a little bit warm on her heart. Then slowly it disappeared, so then we put in the box and until cremation time. <laughs> Kanro Lamo's body is now dressed in the robes of the Buddha that was most important to her in her meditation practice, Vajrasattva, the practice of purification that opens the heart. Vajrasattva is the head of the five Buddha families. It is the Buddha of unification and healing. The Vajrasattva practice purifies all spiritual, mental and physical impurities. Ultimately, it is possible to take on the qualities of Vajrasattva oneself. Someone who is always and everywhere at the service of others. why we kept her uh, three months and then during that time we had uh, ceremonies performed every day.
that it's like going home. There's a saying that uh, daughter going to the mother's place, the son going to the father's place. In Tibetan it uh, says, Pu Pachim Tundra, Pu Machim Tundra. It's as if that she's going home, you know, so there's no sort of fear. <laughs> In the room where Kondra used to meditate, people now come to pay their last tribute to her. Early in the morning, just after dawn, Kandro Lama's body is transferred from the monastery to the specially made cremation stupa, the Purkan. The long-awaited cremation will take place in the afternoon. Then 
あさってのね、瞑想。だこう、あの、ゲノシグソンヒューティテネ、ラマモンボグチェテンのマゾス、セチェンロデチェンボインス、タチェテンシナクセテンテインス、イチェセチェンロダンシクセジェンボクウス、テンワークテハマウスニマジン、テニヒンカノンリカシェウィウス、テニカシェディラマモンボシュンチュンログレセテニヨチン、ランボチクンデヨソンス。I've been so close with the late Kenzo Mbuchi, as I said, he has always been very kind to me. So after he passed away, I thought、uh, Yang Si will have to go into the mountains and ask everybody what is the age of your son and is there a special sign and all that difficult process. That Tibetan, in Tibet, they usually do. And、uh, when I heard that he was born just next door, first it was, oh, it was a bit too easy, sort of. Then later I, I realized that it is Kenzan Bhutta's kindness that he always m a k e everything easy for me. So <laughs> it was very easy. Then he said, I'm going to go to the house. Then he said, I'm going to go to the house. Then he said, I'm going to go to the house. Then he said, I'm going to go to the house. I couldn't run, not really sort of、uh, adjust myself, even though I have faith and I believed that he is the reincarnation. Then I spend time with him, I play with him, and there are so many things he does that really shows that certain part of Kensington, which is definitely in him. Especially sometimes he does really exactly the same what my father used to do. First day he came to the monastery. And he thought he liked this breakfast、uh, with the cereals,、uh, funny Mickey Mouse and things like that.、Uh, he kept there and he thought he would like that.、And、then early in the morning he got up and just rubbing his eyes and came. He said, Where's my soap? So I said, What soap?、And、he said, Rice soap. Then my late father used to have that rice soap every morning. So he made, he made me really. うん。<音楽><音楽><音楽> まあ、
Sarah Mimi, we had uh, actually foresight prayer, uh, which she asked, I want this Lama, I want that Lama. So she meant it for main four Lamas. First, we invited the Lamas who was very close to late Kensal Mbushik or late Kandu. Then we uh, actually choose the sadhanas according to what is their main practice. So tradition which is main practice is this uh, Chinese, red Chinese, according to Middle tradition. So that's why we are requesting Mbushi to perform that ceremony. And previous Kensal which is one of his main practices, Vajrasattva. So our uh, little Kensal Mbushi performed that ceremony. So same thing with Tengar Mbushi and Choni Mbushi. That's their own speciality. Lamma, <laughs> For centuries, these rituals and practices have been passed on from teacher to student. This could be one of the last times that a cremation ceremony is performed by lamas who were actually born in Tibet. The transmission to the next generation gives this cremation extra importance. The many mantras that are recited and the mudras, the hand gestures that are performed, intend to transform the energy by means of sound and movement. <laughs> Tate I guess I was the assistant there. He, he was the main, sort of, the head of the, the mandala there, being the reincarnation of His Holiness, our Guru. I was assisting, you know, like those things that you pour and lit the fire, turn the pages. Behind that, of course, Definitely there is a student and teacher relationship which will go on, hopefully, not only now, 
all the way until enlightenment. Usually, what we see on our ordinary perception of the Guru is what we call Nirmanakaya, someone who yawns, someone who gets hungry, someone who needs to go to the toilet, all this manifestation. When the manifestation is sort of what we call concluded, end of the manifestation, meaning the show is over, right? Then the actor goes behind the real form. He takes out the makeup and all of that. You know, the stage play. That's uh, manifesting Buddha is the stage for the audience. Then he goes behind the curtain. The real form he then takes on. The real form of that is the Sambhogakaya, which is symbolized usually by the crown and the jewel on the Vajra and Bell, all of that. Again, in it there is a very important message here because all this ornament represents samsaric quality. And in Buddhism, we never say you abandon the samsara and then obtain the nirvana. We say not, not, uh, we say knowing that there is no samsara is the nirvana. So to symbolize that, we always have this worldly kind of ornament as a representation.
这个是我们的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人
Then I changed quite a lot. First, my father lost. I changed a little bit. And then I lost my daughter. I changed a little more. <laughs> now I hope. I'll change him more, so we we'll try to visualize him permanent, you know. So I always think, yeah, we all have to go like that. So, of course, I'm sad and uh, I'm missing her, things like that. Then again, I'll go back to my guru, say, okay, this is the thing. Now I should do my more practicing. I hope I'll do more. <laughs>
Just now I'm a little bit like a babysitter for young Sirwishi and uh, I might have to do some practice also because I haven't had much, I received many teachings but then I was busy doing all the work so I didn't have much uh, enough to do practice but uh, my under the responsibility is uh, to give back all the teachings that uh, Kansa Rinpoche gave me so that how it uh, makes the spiritual connection again and also like um, Young Sri Rinpoche recently received some teaching from Trushi Rinpoche, which Trushi Rinpoche received from Kansa Rinpoche. So Trushi Rinpoche gives back to Young Sri, and then future Young Sri will give back to somebody else. <laughs> This is Tupa, and memory of uh, my late mother. And uh, lots of, uh, she has a nunnery in Bhutan, which you saw. So all the nuns want to come here. So we said we'll bring this back to Bhutan. Ah, here. So I'll put uh, my mother's ash and my late father's ash. So small image we'll put inside here. Small image of uh, some jackini or something we'll put here. So rest we just put like that. Dakini prayer. Then we got a flower vases for one for uh, Dakini, one for her life, and one for offering. And then this uh, her life flower vase, that tree, we cut the same tree, but that died. 
but the rest are still green. So they are really in this, so we knew she is not going to survive. I wasn't really hoping, but when I opened, we found the skull. Uh, skull, uh, a little bit broken, but it's more or less like that, that. And then also we found uh, 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 one piece, quite piece which is not burned, central piece. And then uh, normally when high lamas they die, I heard uh, people say that they leave their heart. <laughs> After the fire puja, the blessing of the bones takes place in a three-day long ceremony. It is time for Trulce Grimpuche to authenticate and interpret the remains. ちょっと、これで、これで、ラメネジョロ、そうです。ラメネジョロ。ね、ま、ちなんだ。だから、ペラでペラでやっぱサムルは。うん。だわじで食べるわけです。ペラ。で、え、ビンダーシャゲンよ
Nasıl? <gülüyor> 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 Kanolamus Asses Mord Statues are made, Tzatzas. In various tupas they are placed together with the heart and the skull. Some of them will be taken to Bhutan, where she will be united with her late husband, Dilgo Kienza Rinpoche. Another part goes to the holy city of Varanasi in India, and the rest stays here in Kathmandu. She was my mother, she was my teacher, she was my guru. And uh, when I was very, very young, I wasn't uh, so much uh, attached with her. And she always uh, tell me, do this, do that. And uh, last, before she died, and then uh, about one month, then she steadily told me, oh, you're a very good daughter. Only that time, before she never mentioned. <laughs> so you look after me and you help me. Now I won't tell you what to do and these things. So I said, okay, I'm 58 years old, so I don't need much. I think so, we both laughed. The continuing mindfulness in Tibetan Buddhism towards death induces an increased awareness for life itself. Reminding us of impermanence and the preciousness of every moment contributes towards a more meaningful life. Feel she's somewhere around. Somehow I think she's looking for us somewhere. Mm -hmm. 